Hello, everybody. Welcome to part three of the Data Service API video series. My name is Andy Menon. In part three, we are going to be talking about the basic data service entity operations using the Data Service API. But before we begin, I'm going to go back to where we left off in part two to demonstrate the effectiveness of the refresh token. So let's get started. I'm back in my Postman environment. And for those who have already watched part two, this script must already be familiar. What we did in this script is to place a post request and acquire a refresh token along with the access token. Now, four days have passed since the part two video was published. So if I go to my Postman variables and look at this refresh token, the token that was generated is valid for 60 days. So if I now send a request, I must be able to get a fresh access token, and then I can use that token to demonstrate all the other data service API methods that we are going to be talking about in this video. So let's go and see if this request is going to work and whether I'm going to get a new access token. And we have success. So I have a new access token and I also got back a new refresh token. And based on the test that was written as part of this request, the new refresh token and the new access token have already been populated in my local environment variables. So for the remainder of this video, I'll be using this access token to perform the API data operations that we are going to be talking about in this video. And just in case, should the access token expire, all I need to do is to come back to this script and simply send a request to acquire a new token. And with that, we'll hop back to the documentation and talk about the data service entity endpoints that we are going to be covering in this video. We are back to the data service API reference guide. And in this video, we are going to be talking about the three basic endpoints. And those are the delete entity endpoint, the add entity endpoint, and the update entity endpoint. I'm going to be starting with the delete entity endpoint and that's for two reasons. The first reason is the delete entity endpoint is probably the easiest to get started with. And the second reason is if I add an entity and then demonstrate a delete entity, it means I'll have to go back and create an entity again. So I'm going to try and save me the trouble of having to create entities twice. So what I'll be doing is I'll be starting with the delete entity. I'm going to delete an existing entity. And then I'll be demonstrating the add entity to create a new entity. And once I'm done with creating a new entity, we can take a look at the update entity endpoint. I have already created the script that's required for us to send the delete entity request. And as I had mentioned earlier, this is the simplest request, so we should be covering this pretty quickly. So let's go back to the documentation and assemble the URL that we'll need to send this request. So we start with the base URL and then we append the extension uh, to this URL. And one of the things that you have to notice in the delete entity is you need to know the unique ID of that entity before you can delete it. So what I have done is I have actually decided on an entity that I'm going to delete and I have got that from my user profile list of entities and here is the entity that I'm going to be deleting as part of the demonstration. So the ID of that entity is listed here. So I've copied it and I've gone back to Postman 
and I have created a new variable named ds underscore entity underscore id and populated that variable with this entity or the entity id rather. So I will be using that in this URL. So from the documentation, the URL translates the, the delete entity endpoint URL translates into this base URL and then this extension URL. And you can see that I have the user profile, which is the name of my entity. And of course the delete operation and the postman variable, which will substitute the entity ID in this URL when this request is sent. So if I put these two pieces of URL together, I have composed an entire delete entity URL. So back to Postman, I have that URL here. And obviously, because we are going to be deleting an entity, the request type is going to be delete. And then our authorization is going to be bearer token. And I will be using the access token that we got just a few minutes ago. And therefore, I will be using the variable ds underscore access underscore token. There is not much in the headers. It does not require any additional modifications because the authorization token has already been appended to the request headers. Obviously, this is a request to delete an entity, and therefore, we do not require anything in the body. So the body of the request is going to be empty. So now I'm ready to hit send. And here we go. We have a 200 success message and the body of the response contains a Boolean true, uh, which means that this entity was successfully deleted. So if I go back to my data service in the automation cloud, and here we have the record that I deleted. I'm going to hit refresh. And here we go. That record is gone. Next, we'll be taking a look at the add entity API endpoint. And as usual, we'll start with the base URL and also the extension URL, and that translates to this URL that I have here. So if I put them together, I have this complete insert URL. And if we go to Postman, I have already populated that in my script. Uh, the next two things that we will require are the headers. Obviously, the authorization, again, as usual, I have the authorization and I will be using our variable that contains the token. And the next item on the list that we we'll need is to set the content type. And that is because we will be sending a JSON body as part of the request. And once we have set the headers, the majority of the work is to compose the JSON body that will require as part of sending the data up to the insert method so that a new entity gets created. So for that, we'll have to do some work. I have assembled an empty JSON container here, and I'm going to be populating it with data values. So the first thing we will need uh, for the purposes of building the JSON body will be the column names of this entity. Remember, we are going to be using only those column names that I've added as part of creating these entities myself, and also, only those columns that are marked as required. So I have the department, I have the first name, the last name, and the user organization code. You might also notice that there is another column that I've added and its field type is file. Uh, we will get back to this in the next video, but for now we can, uh, we can ignore it because it is optional. Okay, so I have populated the key values. Now it's time to add data to these key values. So I'm going to add some fictitious data. 
And for the organization code, I'm simply going to go to an online GUID generator and grab myself a GUID. And my raw JSON body is ready. So I'm gonna copy that. And I'm gonna go back into my body. And please note, I have set the attribute of the body to raw and selected JSON. So I'm gonna delete whatever is in there and add this new data here. Now I'm almost ready to submit this request, but here's what's happened. It's been more than an hour since my last API request and my access token has expired. So when I run this, I am expecting this to fail. So I'll hit save and I'll hit send. And as expected, the access token has expired. So what do I do? I simply go back to my previous script and I send this request and refresh my token, which is good. And it is populated in the variable. So I'm going to come back to my add entity script and I'm going to resubmit this request and see what's going to happen. And we have 200 success status. So, which means that the entity has been successfully created. And that is because in the response, we see that we have got an ID back along with the columns that we added as part of the data that we sent as JSON. Now, I'm gonna go back to my data service and I do not yet have that new record here. So I'm going to refresh. And there it is. A new entity record has been created and this is the entity ID. Now, I don't want to be copy pasting this entity ID into all of my requests um, that I'm going to be demonstrating. So what I have done here is just like we did in part two video, I have written a simple test that's actually going to retrieve this response into a response body and then populate another variable named ds underscore entity underscore ID with the ID of the entity that we just created. So if I now go into the variables, in my environment, uh, you can see that the DS entity ID has been populated with this entity that was just created. So what we'll be doing next is to use this ID to target this entity and change it via the update entity API endpoint. We're back to the API documentation and we are on the update entity API endpoint documentation page. And as usual, we'll start with the base URL and also the extension URL. And you will notice that the update entity URL is identical to the delete entity um, URL. That is because both of these URLs will require you to supply the entity ID as part of the URL. So if I go back to my notes, this is how that URL is going to translate. And again, the DS entity ID variable has been appended. And if you recall from the add entity demonstration, this test here in the add entity, the script ran after the response was received and populated our entity ID. So we know which entity we are going to be updating. And the next part would be your raw JSON body. I'm going to be adding only those columns uh, that I will need to update. So in this case, I'm going to be updating only the first name and I will be submitting this as the JSON body for the update request.
And here is the script for the update request. I have the URL and the authorization is obviously the Barrett token. The header is content type application slash JSON. And if I go to the body, again, the body type is raw and the type, the content is JSON. And I'm going to be taking this content here and adding that to the body. And this time uh, the token I have must work because it is within the hour of the last request. So I'm expecting this request to work when I submit it. And we have success. Uh, as you saw with the add entity endpoint, uh, you will get a similar response from the update entity endpoint. But the difference here is you're going to see that your first name has been updated to the value that you provided. So if I come back to the data service and if I hit refresh, and here you can see that the first name has been updated to super top secret. So that's pretty much how the three basic API data operations work in the data service APIs. Uh, in the next uh, video, what we are going to be talking about are the file operation endpoints. And we'll take a look at how we can upload or download or delete files from the file type field in this entity. I hope uh, you found this uh, video useful and I hope you give this a try. Please do like and subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.